Hello everyone and welcome to another video. A long time ago I made a video about the top 5 worst coaster types in the game. That video was a lot of fun to make and it did very well so today we're putting a more positive spin on it and we're going to take a look at the 5 best coaster types in the game. Just like the last video this is based on the coasters functionality and not how good they look. It is of course also at least a bit subjective so feel free to disagree with me in the comments. For the top 5 there are a few factors that are especially important to me. The first one is the ability to have a high throughput while keeping the cost low. Rides are your main source of income in about half the scenarios in the game so the more guests you can process per hour the better. Coasters with access to a launch or boosters have a lag up in this department. The next factor is good stats. The higher the stats the more you can charge and the more useful they are in scenarios with harder guest generation. Coasters with a naturally high excitement rating are also good for people who want to get the highest excitement rating possible. This doesn't help you at all in scenario play but excitement records are still an important part of the game to a lot of people like me. The last main factor that I'll mention is variety. A coaster type that can do one very specific thing very well is great but in situations where that specific thing doesn't apply it's not going to be very useful. Coaster types that can do multiple things quite well are generally better than highly specialized coasters in my opinion. A few weeks ago I asked you guys what you thought that my list would be. It was very interesting to see your predictions and I will include some of the most accurate ones at the end of the video. Now let's start with the list. Number 5. The Junior Coaster This is one of the cheapest coaster types in the game and by a wide margin. This simple design costs 2265 euros to build which is really not much. The same looping coaster is almost twice as expensive and the same giga coaster is about two and a half times the cost. This cheapness does come at a bit of a cost which is a low excitement rating and not that many different track pieces available. This does hurt a bit but you can still charge more than 8 bucks for most designs. The few elements available and low support limit also makes it really hard to make the junior coaster too intense as long as you keep your lateral G's in check which is good for beginners. The junior coaster is the perfect coaster type if you want an easy to build cheap money maker which earns it the bottom spot in this top 5. Number 4. The Vertical Drop Coaster This coaster isn't super flashy in any department but it's very solid all around. First off it has quite good stats. Medium sized designs can get to about 7 excitement fairly easily which is more than a lot of other coaster types. If you want to go bigger you can also reach 9 or even more excitement without too much trouble. One of the aspects that helps you achieve this is the vertical drop coaster's high support limit. At 78 meters it's the 4th highest in the game, barely losing out to the hyper twister and hyper coaster and quite a bit behind the giga coaster. With its access to steep chain lifts it can quickly reach this height and then have a massive drop which gives a lot of stats. If you prefer to go small instead it also has access to the small level to steep and steep to level pieces. This allows for more compact and fast paced designs. The last thing I'll mention is the wide 6 seater cars which allow for a lot of capacity on a short station. This 8 tile station on a looping coaster fits 64 guests while the vertical drop coaster fits 90 guests. And that's with half of the second looping coaster train sticking out of the station. All these factors combined make this coaster great for both a small and effective money maker and a powerhouse coaster with high stats which earns it the number 4 spot on the list. Number 3. 
the Air Powered Vertical Coaster. This coaster type is just purely overpowered. The cheap design is so good that even if you have multiple air powered coasters in your park and it's over 5 months old you can still charge 19 bucks for it. Combine this with a maximum throughput of more than 3000 guests per hour and you have yourself one crazy money maker. If you go even cheaper and forgo the drop height stat requirement you can still charge 20 bucks for it if it's under 5 months old and the only air powered coaster in your park. Spam a few of these and you will never have to worry about money again if you charge for the rides. If you want more info on this design I've made a video about it that's linked in the description. You can also go bigger and fairly easily reach 10 excitement with the air powered coaster. Larger designs do get expensive quite quickly so doing this is best reserved for when you have a lot of money or when money is turned off altogether. The reason that the air powered coaster isn't number 1 or 2 is that it's really one dimensional. Apart from the design that forgoes the stat requirement, even the small designs are rather large, making it unfit for tight situations. Because the only thing it can do is launch at high speeds, it's also always quite intense, making it unfit for more junior oriented rides. However, because it's the best coaster type in the game at making money, it still does make the top 3. Number 2 The Twister Coaster This is the king of versatility. It has a very wide array of special elements available, it is great for both small and large designs and it has very good stats. The first specific thing to mention is the launched lift hill which is unique to the Twister Coaster. This allows the twister coaster to gain both height and speed at the same time, making for a really easy way to reach high speeds very quickly. In Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic and Open RCT2, the twister also gets very strong boosters, which are useful for accelerating the coaster to a high speed in just a few tiles. Open RCT2 also gives the launch lift hill and boosters to the stand up twister and floorless coaster types. So if you're using that, which you should, then the floorless coaster becomes even better than the twister coaster. Because it can get up to speed so quickly you can get good stats on a small design really easily. These designs will also have a really high throughput because the ride duration is so short. As a result they can make really good money. If you want to go the other way and build a big powerhouse coaster with very high stats that can handle more than 5000 guests per hour you can do that quite easily as well. Because the cars are 4 across you don't need a very long station to accommodate enough trains for this which is very nice. The fast launch also leads to shorter ride durations which reduces the number of trains you need to always have one ready to load. You can also take this to the absolute extreme and build a massive coaster with super high stats. The highest excitement rating with evidence that I have reached without glitches on a coaster that doesn't get excitement from airtime is 14.71 on a giant floorless coaster. I swear I actually reached 15 at some point but I can't find the save of that for some reason so I can't prove it. Lastly, the large number of different available elements means that it fits into a lot of small and tight spaces, making it great for small and crowded parks. All these different factors make the Twister Coaster amazing and cause it to be in second place. Before we get to number 1, I want to give a couple of honorable mentions to coaster types that just missed out on the top 5. Depending on your personal preference, these could all switch around with the junior and vertical drop coaster as they are very close together. First, there is the coaster type that a lot of you predicted would be in this top 5 but isn't, and that is the corkscrew coaster. 
it's a rather mediocre coaster type with one amazing design, the micro corkscrew. This is the cheapest micro coaster that doesn't fail a stat requirement and is amazing at getting a lot of guests into your park and making you a lot of money. However, because several other coaster types like the looping coaster are almost as good at this as the corkscrew coaster and because other than this one redeeming quality it is really not a great coaster type it just misses out on the top 5. Next up is the Steel Wild Mouse Coaster. This is a cheap compact coaster type that you can charge a lot for. This one could easily be switched with the junior coaster but I had to make a decision in the end and that's why this one just misses out. The last honorable mention is the Hyper Twister Coaster. It has amazing stats and it can make a lot of money. The main things holding it back is that it's quite expensive and only has a really slow chain lift, making the ride duration quite long, leading to a lower throughput. It's basically a slightly worse version of the number one on this list, which I'm sure you all already know what it is by now. Number one, the Giga Coaster. As I said, the Giga Coaster is the Hyper Twister on steroids. First off, it has access to the cable lift. Not only is this twice as fast as a regular chain lift, it can also do steep slopes. If this isn't enough for you, in RCT Classic and OpenRCT2 it also has access to the fastest boosters in the game, going up to 215 km per hour. Secondly, it has a much higher support limit at 128 meters, by far the highest in the game, barring the two coaster types with no limit at all. This allows it to pick up great speeds, which lead to higher stats. Speaking of these stats, they're the best in the game. Not only does the Giga Coaster really easily reach a high excitement rating, it also has a great excitement to intensity and nausea ratio. Stats like 7 excitement, 5 intensity and only 3 nausea are very common. In fact, the intensity rating is so low that often you're still below 10 even if you get the first penalty from excessive lateral Gs making the Giga Coaster really hard to mess up. The Giga Coaster holds the record for the highest excitement rating ever achieved without glitches at 96.59. It also holds the highest excitement to intensity ratio I have ever achieved on a coaster at 73.87 to 1. The main downside of the Giga Coaster is that it is really expensive per track piece, but because it has such amazing stats you can still build cheap designs that have good stats, even if you play RCT2 Vanilla and don't have access to boosters. The Giga Coaster can do it all. It can be a cheap money maker, it can be a large standout coaster in a park that has great ratings, and it can reach for the skies and achieve absurdly high excitement ratings. All these factors combined make me believe that the Giga Coaster is the best coaster type in the game. And that was my top 5 best coaster types in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. This is of course only my opinion and feel free to discuss your own top 5 in the comments. As I said at the start of the video, I asked you guys what you thought my top 5 would be. I got over 200 responses to that post, which is a lot, so thank you for that. A lot of people got really close but had one mistake. Very often this was the inclusion of the corkscrew coaster at the expense of often the junior coaster. The other two honorable mentions, the Hyper Twister and the Steel Wild Mouse were also often included. What I was a bit surprised by is that quite a lot of people included the wooden or looping coaster. They are incredibly iconic and good for beginners as their designs often feel very natural, but in the end they only have decent stats and don't have too many options. In a complete tier list they would probably rank around number 12 or so. 
Now onto the winners of this poll. No one got the exact order correct, but two people did have the correct 5 coaster types. The first was Javascap, who almost had the exact reverse ordering of my list. Nevertheless, props to them for getting the correct coasters and also providing a correct reasoning for why the corkscrew coaster is only an honorable mention. The second person who got it correct was Cerulean, who with the junior coaster also had one coaster type in the correct position. Congratulations to you both for winning this little contest. If you liked this video consider giving it a like. You can also subscribe or follow me on Twitch. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.